and welcome to a socially powerful media original. We want to share with you short, digestible POV pieces on anything to do with culture, entrepreneurship, and what's going on in the big wide world. So if you like what you see, given this is a first, leave a comment down below and we'll do more. I'd love to comment on this. All right. But firstly, why the book plug? So let me rewind and give you some context. Big global advertising spenders like Amazon and Coca-Cola suddenly and abruptly pulled a lot of their advertising spend in their ads when they discovered them being placed alongside extremist and hate speech content. As a response, YouTube then introduced a new vague policy of automated demonetization, but bizarrely harmful content was still being pushed and innocent content was being demonetized. Creators suddenly started reporting losing almost half of their income, but no one really understood why their videos were being flagged and what could be done to avoid demonetization. To make things worse, while YouTube was under pressure to comfort their advertisers and their creators, the Logan Paul suicide video made it to the very top of the trending page. His punishment? Less advertising, not zero advertising. So YouTube's head of business, Robert Kinsel, agreed to sit down with no other than Casey Neistat to discuss, in an honest chat, what was really going on. Broadly, there were three main reactions. Oh my god, Casey, you really missed an opportunity. YouTube like, really doesn't get us as creators. That's a YouTube YouTube C-Suite absolutely do not get it at all! So let's look at the YouTube ecosystem. There are four main groups. The creators, their audience, the advertisers, and YouTube as a platform. Advertisers have products and services that they want us to know about or buy. They want attention. YouTube, as the platform, is the planet making it all possible. Dollars for attention. So what's the problem? Creators want to make a living and they need the dollars. Brands want the attention. They also care about their brand values and brand safety. And therein lies the challenge. Demonetized videos, fearful advertisers, unhappy creators, and lots of criticism. So what are the rules? Is YouTube doing enough to communicate them? And was this interview useful in any way, shape, or form. I don't claim to have all the answers, but at the very least, the need to communicate and come together has definitely been identified. So first of all, why was it up to a user of the site, i.e. Casey, to reach out to YouTube for this dialogue finally to happen? I get it. I understand people's frustration. Why did a video like Logan Paul's make it all the way to the top of the trending page? And why is your answer? There's no simple answer for that. So let's zoom out a little bit and contemplate this. For advertisers, and they're the ones pumping money into the system, there used to be a lot less choice. Fewer channels, fewer content, fewer messages. And for them, it was much easier to control their brand their values and their brand safety. In a world where we as people share more frequently, openly and authentically than ever before, what does it mean to be brand safe? So how can brands reach audiences authentically? Is controlling too much going to put distance between them and the people that they're trying to reach? For creators, are there alternative ways of monetizing their attention and how much dependence should they have on any one platform. YouTube, how much should they care? And as creators try to find every new ways to pull us in and grab our attention, where's the limit? Shock value, death, suicide, profanity. What is sensationalistic? What is creative? What is socially acceptable? And what is a damage to society? Perhaps YouTube's indecisive stance stems from a fear that interfering, taking sides, could create an imbalance and be overall destructive. The fact remains, all parties depend on each other and the only way to come together is to start a conversation and perhaps there just hasn't been enough of that.